Welcome to Rebuild, Revive and Thrive, where we're going to dance your way through back and hip discomfort. I'm Lisa McLean, and I'm the founder of rebuildprogram.com.au. We're going to talk all things pain and inflammation. Better yet, we're going to decrease the frustration, we're going to increase the confidence, and we're going to just make getting older fun and enjoyable. So make sure that you like, follow, subscribe, and stay tuned weekly to kick the pain to the curb. Welcome back to another episode where we're going to get down and dirty and talk everything about your pelvis. Now, I'm going to assume that you're here listening to this podcast because you've got either back pain, hip pain, groin pain, knee pain, feet pain, shoulder pain, either all of the above or some of the above. You're obviously doing corrective exercises, and if you're not, I really want you to start doing the corrective exercises for this pain. But when was the last time that you actually assessed your pelvis? When was the last time you thought, oh, there's a little bit of a lower back pain or a big lower back pain? I'm going to go and assess my pelvis. Probably not for a long time. And if you haven't, that's why you need to listen to this podcast. I want it to become really important to you, the important, obviously important and the importance of why you need to assess your pelvis and, and bring in some corrective exercises for your pelvis. If you're completely unaware of where to start with exercises, make sure you head over to rebuildprogram.com.au, go to products. There's a whole heap of products in there with corrective exercises. Anywho, moving forward, why is the pelvis so important? Well, it's the center of your movement. You've got this big love heart bone structure right in the middle of our body. And it's, it actually is supporting the upper body and the lower body. So no matter what movement you make and do, the pelvis is included. So we want that pelvis to be to the best of its ability for us to be able to get out of pain. So this may be the missing link to your, to your pain. It may not be, but if either way, make sure we're assessing it. So why else is it super important? Well, it's got the biggest ball and socket joint. Ball and socket joints need full rotation. The biggest ball and socket joint that you have in your body is attached to your pelvis and that's your hip joint. Along with that, it's got some pretty goddamn big muscles, which I call the supporting system, attached to it. Now these big muscles, if they by any means play a little bit of tug of war, or you might have a little bit of a trip like I do down the bottom step because I'm going so fast, and I regather myself, these muscles start playing tug of war. And if you don't start addressing them at that point, and keep in mind, at this point, you're not in pain. You just, you know, if you're like me, you know that it's actually happened. To get, so that we're not actually getting deep in the pain cycle, these, because these muscles now will actually either go overactive or underactive, pull on that pelvis, cause havoc through your pain. And those pain areas that I mentioned at the beginning, they're gonna start flaring up. So if you have these pains, back, hip, groin, knee, feet, shoulder, any of the above, make sure you're adding your pelvis corrective exercises into it. Now, what's the job role of the pelvis? It supports and balances. Every single movement you make, the pelvis supports and balances. It supports the weight of the upper body, it distributes the weight to the lower body, and it provides balance and coordination for efficient movements. Now, before you go, oh, hang on, that's too deep for me. I don't know where to start with that. Do you know, hear me out, hear me out. You know, I just want to throw some important facts out there for you to go, holy moly, maybe I should do my pelvis exercises. Not pelvic floor, pelvis alignment. Now, the alignment, because the pelvis actually keeps our um, body in correct posture alignment, And anything outside that alignment brings various issues, which I will touch base with. So keep listening, keep listening. It's a connection between the spine and the legs. It coordinates movement and it provides efficient force transfer between the upper body and the lower body. So you got to think about if you're even standing to sitting, uh, no, sitting to standing or vice versa, your, your pelvis needs to support and balance. And without that system, the support and the balance, your pelvis is going to stay out of alignment. Those big muscles that I mentioned, the supporting system muscles, they're going to stay overactive and underactive. And that's where your pelvis thinks is home now. So now we've got to retrain to get that pelvis into correct alignment. 
And along with this, we need to get the correct mobility and stability through the pelvis. And this is essential for efficient and pain-free movements, for muscle balance, and also creating all of this balance through any movements, through sleeping, through walking, through driving. Do you know, we need correct mobility and stability. The pelvis mobility, um, we need a it has a percentage of rotation and tilting. And how I want you to picture this is a washing machine. Don't go ahead and Google washing machine and pelvis because you're not going to get anything. You, it's a Lisa McLean analogy coming right at you. So I want you to think about a washing machine. Okay, so incorrect pelvis alignment would be a washing machine with uneven legs that wants to wobble and jolt and move around when we're washing clothes. That's not what we want. We want that washing machine that is stable, but the insides are doing its job correctly. That's the washing machine we want. So the correct balance between mobility and stability. We want the pelvis to support the weight of the upper body and distribute it to the lower body, remember? And it's every movement goes through this stable washing machine. Let's call it that. Now, how is the stability achieved? Because we don't just wake up thinking, okay, I want mobility and stability. That just doesn't happen when we wake up. Through um, Stability is achieved through strength and coordination of muscles around the pelvis and the lower back, which we're talking about the abs, <clears throat> lower back muscles, which there are a lot, and we'll go through them as well, and the pelvic floor muscles. And anybody that has had children or gone through childbirth, <coughs> knows, understands pelvic floor muscles. Sometimes they're not your friend, but they can be. Anyway, that's a whole new topic. So understanding the um, pelvis. Okay, so what can cause, what can cause a discrepancy or a dysfunction through the pelvis? We can go through leg length discrepancy. Now, when we talk leg, leg length discrepancy, we are gonna go talk about the muscles and that's another episode, not this episode. We're gonna talk about the muscles that run deep in the pelvis and they can cause a pelvic hike, let's call it, or a pelvic tilt. So obviously now, because that hip joint is attached to the pelvis, the legs are a discrepancy, we, we don't just want to go out and get orthotics, which if you need orthotics, please get orthotics. Don't, don't just not because I've said this. But to improve that leg length discrepancy, we need to address the pelvis and the muscles attached to the pelvis to see if it's the muscles that are overactive or underactive that's causing that issue. Which leads me into muscle imbalances. Do any overactivity or underactivity within the muscles Hip flexors, like I said, the lower back muscles and the pelvis um, can put the pelvis out. The support system muscles, any of those will put the pelvis out and now start creating your muscle imbalances. You're in pain also, not solely. So don't think I'm saying you're only in pain due to muscle imbalances, but no matter what, whether you've got structure issues, a health issue that's causing pain, your muscles are in stress and your brain is telling your muscles that there's trauma happening. So we do have muscle imbalance, no matter what. So another thing that can put our pelvis out, and I hear this so often, is pregnancy or childbirth. And my children are 18 and 19. But if I, so what I'm saying is it doesn't have to just be newborns or toddlers for you to start thinking, okay, well, my pelvis is out. If you were never treated for pelvis alignment after you had your babies, then your pelvis could still be out because we have hormones raging through our body. We've got about three years before our bones settle and set back in place. And if we weren't treated to put that pelvis back, well, obviously you're gonna have that anterior pelvic tilt. And that's what happens through pregnancy because we're front heavy and our pelvis will tilt. And I do go through different pelvic tilts in the last episode in the posture one where we go anterior pelvic tilt, posture, uh, posterior pelvic tilt, and uh, a pelvis that's rotated. Any of these could happen through daily activities, any trauma, any injury and childbirth, like I'm saying. Um, and that, you know, injury and trauma doesn't have to be like a massive car accident or, you know, a massive injury. It can be like trauma, like I just mentioned before, is me being in a hurry, running down the steps and missing the bottom step and having a little bit of a whoopsie and I have to gather myself. That is trauma because I've landed hard on one side. So if this happens or something similar, 
and we've got that muscle imbalance, now your pelvis is actually not aligned due to those supporting, the big supporting muscles. I hope this is making a little bit more sense to you. So, you know, bringing it back to, hey, maybe we need to assess our pelvis. Maybe we need to actually assess the way that we move. And are we the washing machine that is stable or are we the washing machine with uneven legs? Get my little analogy there, uneven legs, leg discrepancy. Anyway, um, activities that favor one side of the body will actually put your pelvis out as well. And to picture that, um, let's talk holding, I've, I've already gone through childbirth, but holding a baby. If you're in childcare or if you, like me, had a baby and then all of a sudden you have another baby straight away, then my pelvis is in stress. But because I've got a baby on one side and my hip is hiked, or if you're the type of person that when standing too long, you now lean to one side. You really just favor that, that one side, whether it's the left side or right side. Your pelvis now is in stress because we're not having correct alignment. And it just takes you to do these a few times for the muscles to go, oh, well, I might tap out of this one, especially your glutes. The glutes one are a big one to support the pelvis and they'll tap out pretty quickly. I'm telling you now, they definitely will. So if we've got these things going on and now add in lifting something heavy, Let's say you ordered, you know, you ordered something online. I love getting online presents delivered to my door. It's like Christmas. But you've got a big object and the postie's just left at your front door. You've got to go and pick it up. Well, do you think about bending your knees, squeezing your core, activating your glutes and producing the force through your feet? No, <clears throat> we don't. We just lift it up and bring it inside. Lifting these big heavy objects will now put stress through your pelvis and again, that little snowball of what we're talking about with muscle imbalances to the, um, you know, leaning to one side and leg length discrepancies, they all start coming into play. If you play sports that have sudden jerks and movements, again, we're putting pressure through our pelvis and the muscles don't like that. And if you haven't been doing corrective exercises to keep your pelvis in alignment, then this can, like I said, become injury or trauma to the pelvis. Sounds a little bit temperamental, the pelvis, and it probably is, but the bottom line is it's not your pelvis, it's the muscle supporting the pelvis and having the correct mobility and stability ratio. So again, if we aren't, if you're not sure if the corrective exercises are right for you, head to rebuildprogram.com.au, go to products, go have a look at all those products there. If you have issues, press apply now and I will guide and direct you to where you need to be. So let's say that you've ticked a couple of the boxes that I've mentioned. There's more, but you know, we don't have three hours. Uh, well, I do, but you don't want to listen to me for three hours. So let's say that we've ticked a couple of those boxes of things that's going on. Sports, lifting objects, you know, having a trip down the stairs like I do, often do. Um, but just keep in mind, I, I'm not in pain because I've got my body in a really, really good position because I know what to do. We're now going to start getting some back and hip pain <clears throat> and that's initially where it's going to start. You know, we can go down the, the avenue that, you know, your knee might, you might actually put your knee out, but the knee's actually gone out because the pelvis is out. You know, there's so many um, chicken, egg, egg, chicken scenarios, but it's all tied in together. So <clears throat> once we have back and hip pain, you will now favor where the pain is and that's your brain telling your body hey you know what we've got some trauma here we're going to favor that where the pain is and we're going to start compensating and that's again going to be a big one for muscle imbalances we're going to put uneven distribution through our joints we're going to change the way that we walk and we're going to change our posture because your brain it's not because you want to but your brain now favors where that trauma is and pain is trauma in the body no matter big or little that's bottom line so we're going to change the way we move we're going to compensate muscles now are not just imbalanced but we're going to go into overactivity and underactivity and this is all just from sudden movements and this is all from not having the correct mobility and stability through a pelvis because remember like i said it's the center of your movements so let's move on that i mean that's i think has some pretty important factors to assess your pelvis to even when I am assessing my, my client's walking pattern, which I do you know, every week or every couple of weeks to them, um, I'm assessing their walking patterns because I'm assessing the way that they are distributing their weight from upper to lower. Their alignment between their feet and their pelvis, their knees and their pelvis. Do you know these are big important factors in getting yourself out of pain?
But what muscles? So, you know, you can sit there, okay, okay, Lise, you've, you've, you've convinced me I need to go and check out my pelvis and do the correct corrective exercises, but, you know, head me in the right direction here, lady. Glutes. I mentioned the big important one to support the pelvis is your glutes. No matter how big or small you are, they cover a large area of your pelvis for a very good reason. They are what I call the suspension system. They take your suspension through every movement to protect your spine and to keep your pelvis in alignment. Now, if your car was running a bit rough on suspension, you take it straight to the mechanic. But what happens when we run rough on suspension is that compensation just happens because we don't think about taking ourselves to the mechanic. Well, the mechanic in this situation is me and I'm happy to take a look. Um, but you know, we, the glutes are your suspension system for a very good reason. And like I mentioned before, they will switch off at the drop of a hat. They don't want to. They are lazy. They're like teenagers when you ask them to clean their room. They don't want to, not now, they'll do it later. And that's the attitude that the glutes have. So hip flexors also, they play a really big important role to lay a hip and knee extension, yes, but actually keeping your pelvis in alignment. Ab muscles, don't go and do crunches or sit-ups just because I said the ab muscles are important to pelvis, but the abs, when connected to the glutes, and relieve the hip flexors play, play a huge stabilizing role in your spine and your pelvis and also giving the glutes a kick up the butt. Da -da -ding -ding, pardon the pun. But they will, when they're connected to the glutes, the glutes will stay activated. They won't become lazy. So it's about the connection and the activation through all of this to keep stability and mobility. I'm going to go down the, the track of the erector spinae muscle and within my clients we call it the ES muscles because you don't need to remember the name. You just need to know that they're intrinsic muscles that run deep along the spine. So from your sacrum all the way up to your neck, these muscles pull on your pelvis when not correctly activated. But you know when they are, they support your pelvis, they support your neck, they support your shoulders and they support your spine. So they're pretty important. So when we um, talk about compensation, these big muscles, right and left, they're, they're not the same. They can become um, one side overactive, the other side underactive, and that is quite common in injury, the cross-section in injury. All right, that, that's another episode, actually. That's another good episode that I will talk about. Um, but overactive muscles, when we talk about these little sudden jerks or movements or, you know, always leaning to one side, what's going to happen out of the muscles that I just mentioned? Well, the overactive muscles will become the hip flexors and they're the ones that run deep in the hips. Hip flexors attach themselves to the spine, run deep into the hips and then attach the top of the femur. Pretty important structure right there, I'm going to say. Pretty important to be aware of when we're in the pain cycle. So the hip flexors, the lower back muscles. So we talk about the quadratus lumbarum. Again, you don't need to remember the name. Think about the QLs. That's what I call them with my clients. They also play a big role with the hip flexors. When the hip flexors are out, these QLs will be out. The QLs attached to your rib, your spine, and the top of your pelvis. Pretty goddamn important if you're going to ask me. They will become overactive. They will be literally the pain in your back, just above the love heart shape that we call the pelvis. And the hamstrings. The hamstrings, I reckon I could do a whole podcast on the hamstrings alone. They're stubborn mules. They're a stubborn donkey. You pull these hamstrings and they're going to pull twice as hard back. Don't stretch your hamstrings. When I see people stretching their hamstrings, I just think, oh my God, uh, they are going to pull on your lower back. You're not going to walk around rubbing your hamstrings going, geez, Lise, I've got a sore hamstring today. No, they're going to pull on your lower back and they're going to become overactive. And without me rambling about the hamstrings, they will switch your glutes off in an instant. They want to be the dominant muscle. We need to flip that and retrain that. So they're the overactive ones. The most important. I mean, I could talk about this for days on end, but who's going to listen? Let's talk about the underactive ones. What's going to happen now when we've got a misalignment in our pelvis? 
Um, you know, we've spoken about the overactive. The underactive ones are going to be your abs. Super important in protecting your spine, but also super, super important for stabilizing, providing support to the glutes to protect your pelvis. And they'll switch off pretty quickly, definitely, especially in an anterior pelvic tilt or a posterior pelvic tilt. Those tilts, no abs, no glutes, switched off. What's floating in space now is your pelvis. And every other muscle that I've mentioned has no idea of its job role. We're going to talk the glute muscles. Obviously, they're going to become underactive. They're sleeping. They're snoozing for a long time. They can be hard to wake up. In the right order, they will. And what I mean by right order, the right corrective exercises, they will wake up. Your adductors, your inner thigh muscles. Now, along with the hamstrings, I just want to make this a really important factor. The adductors and hamstrings actually attach to your sit bone. So when where they attach to with your sit bone, they will pull and tug on your sit bone and they'll tilt and rotate and twist your pelvis like that. They're happy to, absolutely happy to. And once this happens, glutes switch off. But the adductors will bring, along with the hip flexors, groin pain. Now, I hope I'm not complicating this, and like I said, I can talk about this for a long time, but all these muscles, whether they're overactive and underactive, they will actually bring similar pain. So it's very hard for you to dissect. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritties of it, then make sure you go to rebuildprogram.com.au, go to apply now and let's have a chat, and I'll map out a bit of a roadmap for you. But the adductors and the hamstrings pull on the, the um, sit bone, hamstrings being overactive, adductors being underactive. Um, I was going to go deep into the adductors. Adductors, sit bone, they attach to this four adductor muscles and then they attach to your femur bone from the top to, to down to your knee, which is why adductors play a big role in knee pain as well, as well as hip flexors, knee pain. So we're talking about um, underactive. We're talking about our deep hip rotators. So the hip rotators actually stabilize the hip joint and they help support and keep your pelvis in alignment and when they're switched off or underactive then we have no support there so that's the muscle dynamics just touching base just you know just you know making a dent in the important factors of the pelvis because like i said i could talk about this for hours um, that's we've pretty much gone through the big support system. I've gone through the suspension system as well of the pelvis. And again, and I've gone through the washing machine. All these analogies are Lisa McLean analogies, so don't try and go Google them. This is how I like to actually keep it simple for people to understand. Moving forward, when our pelvis is not in alignment, when all of these muscles that I've just mentioned, the support system, the suspension system, and if you have the incorrect washing machine scenario, you're gonna have pain in the lower back, you're gonna have pain in the bottom, you're gonna have pain in the hip, you're gonna have pain in the thighs, you're gonna have pain in the groin, in the knees, feet, and then it's also gonna go up to your shoulders. So you can see how the pelvis being out of alignment, how the muscles that play a really important role to your pelvis need to be addressed and they can keep you in that pain cycle. So what I say, okay, a few little tips, a few little tips um, in correcting. What I say to my clients and I remind my clients and I'm reminding you right now, lift up through, lift out, lift up through your hips, okay? And give me, let me give you another scenario, another Lisa McLean analogy. When you're sitting or standing, do it right now. Try and squeeze your pelvis in. Obviously, you're not going to because it's bone structure and it's, and it's not moving. But I want you to picture squeezing your pelvis in and lengthening up, and I'm doing it right now and my core's activating straight away, lengthening up through my spine. So squeeze the pelvis in and lengthen up through your spine. And now what we're doing is correcting alignment and providing stability through our spine. And eventually you're gonna start realizing, hey, this is my neutral spine, which again, I touched base in the posture episode last time. And again, waking those, that support system up. When we talk about corrective exercises, and I, I recommend everybody doing corrective exercises, and that is the most efficient way for you to get out of pain and stay out of pain. Corrective exercises need to be done at the right time in the right order. And if you're having trouble knowing what to do, rebuildprogram.com.au, go and either go to products or go to apply now and there's a solution for everybody right there. 
So make sure that we're doing our corrective exercises. And when you do your exercises, know exactly why you're doing them. There's no point if I hand you something, um, well, if you hand me something, let me give you this scenario. If you hand me something and I try it, but I don't know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and what it's doing. And you know, the first couple of times I think, no, it's not gonna, it's, it's not helping me lease. Well, I'm not gonna do it. But if I, you tell me why I need to do it, what it actually does, and how long it's gonna take before I actually feel the benefit, then I'm gonna keep at it. Consistency key is the key. So lifting up out of the hips, stop leaning to one side, making sure that we have the correct pressure through the sole of our feet, so the soles of our feet also connect to the core, which provides stability through our pelvis. So these are all little tips that I'm forever telling my clients, and I'm forever telling you now. So keep these in your head. So we don't wanna to lean to one side, we wanna lift out of our hips, we wanna do our corrective exercises when we are sitting down. We wanna make sure that our hips are in line, our knees are in line with our hips to take the pressure of our pelvis. We wanna make sure that our shoulders are back and down to take the pressure of our neck, which again is connected to your pelvis. There's so many tips, and I could sit here for hours telling you tips, but bottom line is if you don't know what you're doing, rebuildprogram.com.au and you know, whether it's the products that you want that has a solution for everybody with corrective exercises spelt out black and white, or if you want to have a chat and we dive deeper, solution for everybody. But that's a pretty much a wrap on this episode on the pelvis. Whether it's that you want to get out of pain, whether it's that you're an athlete wanting to improve your athletics performance, whether it's that you just want to improve and be a better you through daily activities, there is something for everybody in these podcasts and I'm just here to keep it simple, to have, have a bit of a laugh, keep it lighthearted, but also give you the important facts on how to be a better you in all scenarios. But as always, if you like this episode, make sure you go and share it on your social media, whether it be Instagram or whether it be your Facebook, tag me in it, Lisa McLean. Let's spread the good word and get as many people as we can out of pain. And the, and the bottom line to staying out of pain is being aware, being aware of what you need to do and why you need to do. But with that, I'm going to leave you until our next episode. Make sure that you become a better you by becoming more aware of what you need to do.